How's it going, everybody? Okay, well, here we are for the Friday Masterclass here on Adobe Live for illustration. And uh, I am your host, Kyle Webster. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or elsewhere, I am uh, following the live chat at behance.net slash live. Behance, B-E-H-A-N-C-E dot net slash live or be dot net slash live that's where i'm following the chat so if you have any questions for me during this uh, experience we can uh, head over there and we can chat about it okay so thank you for joining me uh, on this beautiful friday for some illustration today we're going to talk about the ability to create professional amazing art for your clients for your um, editorial art for advertising art for book covers for whatever it happens to be using a very limited number of tools and i'm talking about basically three the lasso tool really is number one that's like 99 percent of what i'm going to do today um, the second one is gradients i'm going to do a couple of gradients here and there the third one is color fill but that really kind of goes hand in hand with the lasso so honestly it's all about the lasso tool that's all you need um, so check this out this is a uh, illustration i did very recently, um, actually for another demo for my students at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts um, in our digital rendering class where I employed this method where I simply just use the lasso tool and uh, here is the result. Um, and you can see that um, you know there's a lot you can do with just this one tool, which is make selections, fill it with color, and uh, bang, you're good to go. So we're gonna do that today. Now I've created myself a little sketch here so a cowboy kind of walking through this landscape. All right, so I did this uh, just before the stream. Um, it's very loosey-goosey, but there's enough information there for me to work from. And uh, in order to get things cooking, I'm just going to knock back the opacity there. And uh, what I like to do is just work in layers, okay? I just go from background to foreground. So to start off, I just want to fill in that sky with a color. I mean, I'm not even sure what we're going to go for here just yet, but just to... Um, give myself something to look at, I'm gonna do that. Okay, so now I've got a base color to look at. Everything can change because I'm gonna work non-destructively by working on lots of different layers, okay? Um, so get yourself set up with a document if you wanna follow along and try this out. Um, you don't have to keep it as, uh, as busy as this, you can do something a lot simpler. Uh, but you're gonna see that I'm really just gonna essentially use the lasso tool to create this image, okay? It's also gonna kind of inform the style that I use. It's gonna be a very specific way of working where I'm not gonna get too into um, really gritty details, for example, with the silhouette of the cowboy and, and whatnot. And that's gonna work out well for the illustration in the end, which is kind of how you can see what happened with this illustration. I mean, this guy, you know, it's just a basic silhouette with some flat color, nothing fancy going on there. So let's see who's joining me today. Over here we have Chris, what's up, Cody, and uh, Aaron and Christelle and Joe Terma and Chris uh, and Golden. And um, I see Robert is here as well. Thanks for joining. Samantha, hey everybody. Golden and um, I said Golden already. Well, hi Golden, I'll say hi to you twice. Um, all right, folks, why don't we get to it? So I've got my lasso tool selected. Hit the L on your keyboard if you're working on desktop Photoshop. And that's gonna pull up your lasso tool. And uh, here it is. So I've just got the regular old lasso tool. You can see here I can make a selection and I could fill it with color just like that. Okay, you get the idea. All right, now how do I do that? Option delete is fill with the foreground color. Command delete is fill with the background color. For all of you out there using a PC, hey, every time I say option, what I'm saying is alt. Okay, so remember that. When I say command, I am saying control. So that's what you need to look for on those keyboards. Alrighty, so we're gonna create a new layer above our background color there. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just make a little shape kind of following along this line here. Just blop that out. I'm gonna sample from right here, grab that color, and I'm gonna go cooler, so I'm heading towards my greens, all right, and I'm just gonna go a little darker and just fill that in like that, okay? And I'm gonna turn off my sketch for a moment and see, yeah, I've got just a tiny bit of contrast there. It's pretty much all I really want. Um, I might uh, come a little closer to this color. Let's see here. So I'm still pushing it a little cooler. A little less saturated, there we go. And I'm gonna lock my layer transparency. Now this is the key to quickly changing the colors that you make everywhere, okay? Lock your layer transparency. This means I'm gonna just change the color of what is on that layer already, the pixel data that is there. I'm editing that. I'm not in any way I'm adding anything uh, outside of the shape that's currently occupying that layer. So lock your layer transparency. Good habit to get into, good trick to know, good thing to do. 
All right, now there's that one little bit right there. Now right behind it, okay, make a brand new layer. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna go for a slightly different color. I'm gonna go a little cooler and just a little lighter right there. And I'm gonna take and just kind of make this shape right here. And that's gonna follow all the way up to there. All right, let's see how that looks. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks okay to me. All right, now, all of this could change. All of this will change. Now, while I've got this layer here, okay, that's got uh, this background shape, what I'm gonna do, very simply, is I'm because I've locked the layer transparency, I can take my lasso and I can make selections inside of that shape and I can change the color. So, check this out. We are gonna sample this color here. We're gonna go a little cooler again and just a tiny bit darker, okay? Tiny bit darker. And here, I'm just gonna start cutting out some shapes like this, all right? Do, 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 do. And I'm gonna come in here. And I do that. I'll go a little darker than that. I'm gonna go a little darker than that. We want a bit more contrast there. That's more like it. Okay. And then I'm going to modify this here. I'm gonna come in here, make a little change right there. And here we go like this. Alrighty. And I think I'll just let this kind of come all the way down to that side like that. So we leave just a sliver of info right there. All right, now let me hide my sketch for a moment so you can see what I'm doing. See this? I am adding just a bit of interest to that shape with some interior shapes, okay? And that is going to go a long way at the end of the illustration, you'll see, to giving us not a ton of detail, but just enough to give that some form, okay? Now, granted, this is a very flat 2D kind of illustration, this style, it's shape-based and all that, but it doesn't mean we wanna eliminate completely this idea that these objects have uh, dimension, okay, they're three-dimensional objects. All right, let's grab this color again. Now I'm gonna model everything off of this. Now this is my sort of canyon uh, rock color, okay? Now as I get closer, I wanna go a little darker and a little more saturated. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do here. All right, so for this next shape, which I'm gonna now add another layer, okay? On top, I'm just gonna come down here and down like that. Okay, just get that all in there. And if I hide my, my sketch, you'll see this is now slightly darker, okay? Now, what I can do is I can check myself. I can sample this color and this color and say, look, all right, this one needs to be a little bit darker than this, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just knock it back down here like that. Remember, I can lock my transparency and hit Option Delete, and that is going to fill it in nicely, the entire layer. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm checking my values. I wanna make sure that as I get closer to the viewer, I want things to be um, higher contrast, so darker darks, lighter lights, and things like that. Okay, I'm just trying to keep that in mind as I go along, right? And the sky, you know, I look at it now and I say, okay, the sky probably at the end of the day might wind up being a little lighter. You know, I'm not sure yet. Um, but all these things can change, which is why we keep them on separate layers. Okay, bring our sketch back here. All right, now tucked in between these two layers, we have this little guy right here. So I'm just gonna kinda throw that in there. It's gonna come out on this side. And then up like that. So we are gonna just add that in there. And uh, here, you know, I could probably do something like I could grab this, and just grab a slightly darker version of that. Let's see how that feels in there. Hide my sketch again, just check how things are reading. And I think for now that probably is gonna be fine. I can always come back and mess with that. Um, and as before, with this uh, sort of shape building on the inside, right? What I can do is I can actually go lighter this time. I'll grab this 
and I'll go a little warmer and a little lighter. Okay, so we're gonna do this. And I'm gonna lock my layer transparency. Okay, we're all getting very familiar with that action now because it's so useful. All right, and here we go. Just kind of imagining that like the light is, is hitting these surfaces, right? Okay. Gotta get creative with my little shapes here as I go. And that just, see what that does? It just makes it feel like there's a little more going on there than simply um, than simply a flat shape. Now, here's the first time I'm gonna do this. Now, normally I'd wait a little while to get this kind of thing going, but I wanna show you something neat. Now with this layer right here that I'm turning on and off, okay? You notice that, you know, I've got a little bit of an issue here with the contrast. It's not exactly the uh, as, as good as it could be. Um, and so I am going to do something here. I'm going to actually employ the gradient tool. And I'm gonna grab this color. Okay, and I'm just gonna go a hair darker like this. Okay, just a hair darker. And I'm going to use a radial gradient. A radial gradient is gonna be like a, a circle. Okay, circle shape. And right here, I'm gonna just go like that. Whoops, I've got it on the um, dissolve mode. We want just a normal, normal gradient. All right, and I'm gonna use my, my wand and I'm gonna select Those colors are a little bit too close to each other. So let me just knock my tolerance back. There we go. Ta-da. And I'm gonna take my gradient and I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna pop a little gradient up like that. Now what does that do? Look what that does. It changes the contrast between here and here. See that? So now what I'm left with is a bit more contrast between the two and that helps that to stand out. Now I could go the other way too. Check this out. I can grab this and I can say, no, I wanna try a lighter color. Okay, grab my gradient. And remember, I'm going from foreground color to transparent. Foreground to transparent is the kind of gradient I'm using. So it's not a two color gradient. Important to remember that. See that? Look what that does. I think I like that better. That pushes that rock even further back. Atmospheric perspective, right? You're using a little bit of that atmospheric perspective. I can throw some down there as well. Um, and so that really, really helps to set those apart uh, as layers from one another, okay, in the illustration. Okay, so we're going to come back here for a moment, and we're looking at what we got here. And I think as I look at it, I think what I want to do is I want the sky to be the lightest. So I'm actually going to take this color, and I'm going to change it to a slightly cooler color, get a little bit lighter. And I'm gonna fill this background color with that, which is this very little, this last little mountain in the back that we threw in there at the very beginning. And then I'm gonna take my sky, I'm gonna move more towards a yellow, which by its own nature is already a lighter color. Okay, and throw that in there. Now look how much that changes everything. Suddenly this gets a lot darker, this gets a lot darker, this gets a lot darker, right? And so to adjust, I just keep trying things until I feel like I've got a little bit more of a balance. So these are very small changes I'm making when I'm in the color picker. You can see me doing that. And you know, I feel like, okay, between this, yeah, I kind of like that one. So I'm gonna stick with that. All right, bring our sketch back and see where we need to go next. All right, now while I'm on this layer here, I feel like it's kind of in line with whatever's happening here and here, okay? So I have to make a decision. Do I want to include these little rocky bits here or just eliminate them? Um, I think I'd like to include them. So I'm gonna take this same color here and come back to that layer. I'm gonna add some, add some info here. Okay, now remember, 
first thing I have to do is unlock layer transparency so I can still fill with color. That's an important detail. And I'm going to do this. We're going to come around this way. Notice I'm not like too terribly concerned with following the sketch exactly or whatever. I'm just making nice selections with the lasso tool and going for it. It can always modify them later. You can remove parts of the selection. You can add to the selection. Not a big deal, okay? Nothing to sweat there, nothing to worry about. Alrighty, now, now this guy right here I actually want to kind of pop a little bit in front of this, okay? And even though I'm using the same color as all of this right here, let's see, I probably keep this on the same layer, but I might use a separate color. Let me just see what I can get away with here. Let's see what I can get away with. Let's see what I can get away with. You know what, just to be on the safe side, you know, I don't like to play around. I'm gonna go a little redder and a hair darker. That's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna do that, okay? Hide our sketch. See what we're doing now? We're starting to really build things in, right? All right, any comments or questions? Let's see, so effectively you're going from saturated to unsaturated. Cool, thank you, Steven. I see contrast better when it's on grayscale. Hey, Sarah, me too, everyone does, so check this out. Just fill a layer with black over your entire image and then set it to uh, color, here you go. And uh, check that out. Now I can hide my sketch and you can really see how your, how your values are shaping up. So you, you can leave that layer up there, you can use it anytime you need it, there it is. I can always double check right there on that layer, right? How handy is that? So, pro tip for y'all. Fill a layer with black, set its uh, layer mode to color, and check out how things are going. Okay, bring our sketch back. Okie dokie. So, we're moving along nicely here. We're gonna borrow from this color here while we're on this layer. And um, we're gonna go a little, a little more saturated, a little darker. Okay. And I'm going to draw this shape here which has a cutout in it see this it's got this like little section that's been cut out and I'm gonna echo that theme um, on uh, this side in the in the foreground we have that going on as well nice to be able to echo stuff if you have the opportunity right um, always a good thing I might as well do it right now. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go even redder. Now here, even though I'm going to go darker for the shadows, I'm probably going to go brighter and more colorful for the the um, the highlights and whatnot. Okay, but for now, for now, I'm just going to knock this shape in while I'm thinking of it. Okay, so let's do that. Boom, 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 and then up we go. And down, and down, and down, and down. Okay. Now, I'm gonna actually have that blend a little bit with whatever this color happens to be, but that's gonna happen with a gradient later and that'll be very easy to achieve. So let's knock that in. Okay, remember we can always turn off our sketch, look at our values and say, how are we doing, All right? Pretty handy. Turn that off. Alrighty, bring back our sketcheroo and let's keep on rocking, okay? So I got this color right here, kind of want to pop that in back there. Um, or actually, I think I'll take this and just continue it back there. So I've got that layer, this nice orangey pink layer right there. And I'm just going to keep on messing with that for a minute. Throw that in there. Um, Remember that we were doing some nice sort of highlights and whatnot there, so I'll I'll go ahead and throw some of those in. Make sure you're locking layer transparency. Really, it's your best friend. Um, if you're not already doing it, boy, you're you're missing out on one of the best things you can do in Photoshop. Okay, you can do such lovely things there. By the way, I started this illustration with my um, lasso tool set to anti-aliasing turned off. It's because I was doing another demo 
for the students with that and I forgot to turn it off. So, so part of this illustration, if I were to zoom into pixel level, you're gonna see is like a little bit choppy, um, but hey, it's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. You know, if you wanna fix it, you just create a layer behind whatever layer it is that you drew. So for example, this layer, right? Whoops, here it is, this one. I would just create a layer behind it and grab this color and follow like right along the edge, just on the outside of it like this. And do -do 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 -do. hold down the shift key. So I'm adding to my selection. So this would be like a cleanup operation. I mean, I know time is of the essence here, so I don't want to be wasting time doing all this, but you see what I mean? You just fix it like that, right? Same thing here. We, lock, we have our layer um, transparency locked anyway, so I come up to that layer above it, and I just quickly make these same kind of shapes right here. Just going right, like kind of in the same vicinity, and fix that. Easy peasy. Except I forgot that I did add a gradient, so I'm not gonna do that now. But you get the idea, and what you do is once you've made a fix, just go ahead and grab both those layers, Command E, that's gonna merge them together. So now you're safe. All right, so carrying on. We were over here on this shape, uh, here to the right, this nice big rock shape, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sketch and lock its layer transparency, change the color to yellow, see that? So now I can see what some of these cool shapes were that I drew in my sketch, because I wanna mess around with those. Um, so come inside that shape, make sure that it is uh, locked, layer transparency. I'm gonna knock my sketch back to 20%, um, just so I can clearly see what I'm doing. And uh, let's have some fun here with this whole section right here. Remember the rule, big, medium, small. And what am I talking about? Well, kind of everything when it comes to art, but make sure that whatever shapes you're drawing, you have big shapes, small shapes, medium, medium shapes. So like here comes a little small piece right there, you know, and um, maybe another one right there. Beep, beep, beep. And maybe I wanna knock out a section right there. It doesn't matter, but um, that's the thing, variety is the spice of life, and that is certainly the case when it comes to illustration, artwork, okay? You wanna make sure that you're not uh, boring people with what you're creating. And if everything's too repetitive or the, the shapes are all the same size and shape, um, you're gonna have some issues, okay? All right, so this time, like I said, I'm gonna try and go a little brighter so I'm gonna grab this and just pop up this way and see how that feels. Okay, now let me just, um, let me see how that feels here. Whoops, how did I wind up? Let's try that again. Weird, look what it's doing. It's, it's, it's actually drawing outside of the selection. I'm not quite sure how that happened. Oh, I did those on the same layer. Silly Kyle, silly, silly, silly. How did I do that? Why didn't you all catch me on that? And look at me just being a nasty guy, blaming you like it's your fault. Jeez Louise. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I am gonna fix this right away. So I'm gonna snag that and hit Command J, duplicate it. So there it is on its own layer, okay? And come back over here, wand that, get rid of it, so that I can just connect all this action here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we're safe. Grab that color, and let's fill that in. All right, back to where we were a second ago. All right, now I can remake that little selection that I had. 
And let's do that. And it's not going to be exactly the same as what I did a moment ago, and that's totally fine. This is the great thing about drawing like landscapes and um, when, when you compare it to drawing like human faces and stuff, you really can like really mess around with the features and the, the shapes um, without getting into any real trouble. Um, and that's because we will accept that this is how things look in the natural world. We'll accept that there are going to be odd little twists and turns and things like that. When you're drawing trees, for example, when you're drawing a human face, well, there's a lot less room for error. We all know that. Um, now look at that. See how close these are in value? So what are my options? I could lighten this, right? I could darken it. I could lighten this, okay? Um, we have some choices to be made there. So at the moment, I'm thinking I'll probably darken this a hair, but only in, in one little section of it. So I'm gonna go just a tad cooler and darken it like that. And we'll come back to that layer. There it is. Choo -choo -choo -choo. Um, I gotta remember, where is my sun? There it is. Okay, so I can just make sure that I get these shapes right. Okay. Now, let's turn off our sketch and check out how that is reading. Definitely better, still a little tight on those values there, but I think because of the color being as different as it is, I should be able to get away with it. Let's see how it goes as we continue with the illustration. Okie dokie, folks. All right, bring in our sketch back. Here we go. Now, um, in between this layer and this layer, I have a little section of land here that I want to pop in. Okay, so let me just change my sketch color again. You can see what I'm doing here. Ah, the beauty of locking layer transparency it really is a wonderful thing. All right, it's time for me to do just a quick reminder. If you are watching on uh, YouTube or on uh, Facebook or somewhere else, remember that I am monitoring the chat on Behance. So you got to go to be.net slash live okay just a reminder that is where I am watching all the comments and the chat okay gang so okay we're gonna remove just a chunk of that right there and add just a chunk right there And this is going to be our little area of land that I'm going to add right here. I'm going to go cooler on this and a little lighter. So we're going to do this. And that's going to sit there behind that big rocky bit right there. So that looks okay to me. I'm gonna mess with that a little bit later, but I'm gonna have some water now coming through here. And uh, of course we've got our rider to deal with. So while I've got this color selected though, and while I'm on this layer, I'd like to go ahead and continue with um, this theme here, this color theme here. Just poking back there and then kind of making its way around this side and then again around this side and um, we're gonna then pop 
it over here. And we're going to bring it all the way over here. And don't worry, I'll mess with some of those colors in a moment, OK? But we're going to just carry that around like that and knock that color in. And right here, where this guy comes through, OK? Going to make a selection of that layer. Hold down the Command key, select the little image section of that layer. And I'm going to just erase, oopsie, hang on, this layer, there we go. Just erase some of that right there. Because um, I'm going to actually overlap some of that. And I'm going to throw that in there too. All right, let's see how that's looking right there. Okay, so far so good. Now I don't want all this foliage to get distracting up here. I actually, actually want to keep it close to the water's edge because that's where it'd be able to grow. So I'm going to straighten out some of this here. Start by just deleting that. Alrighty. And pick back up with that in a second after I decide how I want to solve this area right here. Because I think I want to have a little land right in front. So while I've got this color in front, I'm going to go slightly darker. Or actually, you know what? I kind of like that the sky color is coming through there. I'd like to kind of mirror that. So I think that might actually show up again over here. You can see what, a, what an exact kind of process it is to make an illustration, right? <laughs> Nothing is final. Um, you know, you have to make your decisions as you go. And you have to be totally fine with having to make changes um, See, like, I kind of want this whole thing to just pop right in front like that. That's just making me happy right now. Okay. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. All right. Now we're going to pop a water in back here. Okay. Now that's going to be basically, I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool here. So that's going to be from, let's go here to here. That's just going to fill in this whole area right here. So I've got the layers, I've created a layer in between our little foliage stuff and those um, rocky bits. Okay, so let me just knock that down to about uh, there. That feels like where it needs to be. And we are going to use a much cooler color. So we're going to start with this. We're going to push that even cooler, a little darker like that. And yep, that's starting to really be what I want. But I'm going to go a little darker, a little darker. Yep, that's what I want. Now it's funny because you would look at this and go, wow, that looks kind of blue, doesn't it? But this is the magic of color. As you look at that and you think, yeah, it's kind of blue. Um, but, you know, if you were to isolate that color and look at it in the color wheel, you'd be like, good grief, that's not blue at all. See that? Look at what it looks like. I'm actually sampling that color right now, and this is what it looks like. So color is very, very deceiving, right? Deceptive, deceiving, deceptive. Learn to speak English, Kyle. Um, because everything matter, everything depends rather on um, what color is next to another color, right? So you gotta be careful. 
color will, will sneak up on you and, and be tricky and fool you and say, uh, you think this is what you want, but really you do not know what you want until you've already put a color down. You have to put something down before you can decide what it is you really need. So, um, watch out. Color can be very deceptive. Okay, gang? And uh, don't be afraid of color, though. Here's what you do. You go out right now and you pick up a nice copy of James Gurney's book, Color and Light. Do yourselves a flavor and go and grab that book. You're gonna be so happy you did. You're gonna say, holy smokes, how did I go this long in my life without this work of pure gold? Because believe you me, it is, it is an absolute masterpiece. Um, it'll change your life. Sorry to be dramatic. But really, if you're looking for the best explanation of, you know, how this stuff works, just go with people who know what they're talking about, like Mr. James Gurney. Um, he's gonna, he's gonna set you straight. Okay. He's going to set you straight. Da -da -da -dee. Just trying to make things a little interesting here. Adding some color, speaking of color, to some of this stuff here. You know, I mean, I've only got an hour with you folks. It's not even an hour, honestly, it's 57 minutes. So I'm not gonna be going crazy with this stuff and figuring it all out as I normally would. Um, I want you to get the gist though, so that you see that it's really possible to make a pretty decent piece of art using nothing but uh, the lasso tool. Right? It's kind of amazing how much you can get done with this little guy. Um, quite the powerful, quite the powerful tool, I gotta say. And yeah, it's, it's really, really lovely. And you know, there are artists who, I mean, this is, this is how they make their living. They just make shapes play with those shapes until they get something they like and they are done. Um, that's kind of their whole process, honestly. You know, check out Bob Stack if you wanna see somebody who's like rocking it with shape-based illustration. Last time I heard, like he refused to update Photoshop past version 3.0 from like, you know, 1998 or something. Uh, or whatever that was, maybe it's even earlier, because he was so satisfied with the workflow that he had. It's like, that's all he wanted. He felt like, I got it, I'm good. And I'm sure by now he's, he's updated a little bit, but my point is like, um, honestly, he just was so satisfied with being able to make shapes and to be able to make color fills with those shapes that he was kind of like fine with not doing anything else. So, you know, pretty interesting stuff. Also, great illustrator, look at his work. It's, it's really special, good stuff. New Yorker covers, picture books, um, all kinds of neat stuff. Alrighty, so, focus, Kyle, focus. <clears throat> We are going to go even lighter now than this. We're going to pop up this way. We're going to warm that up a hair. And we're going to just make a layer on top of this. And we're going to cut in here. Like this. And that's gonna be another shape for our foreground. 
just to separate things out a bit more. Um, we're going to take the... which layer is my water? I haven't labeled any of these layers because, you know, I have bad habits. Don't be like me. Unless you, unless you want to have bad habits too. Okay, so we've got that going on. And we need to add some interest now to this and to this. And of course we're gonna take uh, this and we're going to carry that on back here. Um, just a bit, a bit more. Tap on that layer and find that. There it is. Yeah, if you're ever lost and you're looking for a layer, just get your move tool and go ahead and tap, hold down the command key and just tap on some section of your art. You know, like if I grab the move tool and I tap here, it's gonna take me to that layer. Tap here, it's gonna take me to that layer. You're gonna need it sometimes, believe it. Uh, you're gonna need it. Okay, we're over here. And this is gonna just keep on going that way. Unlock transparency and fill that. And then here, I'm going to pick up slightly, actually I wanna grab this, get a little darker, and just pop that in there. Okay, feeling good. Actually, it'd be nice to echo some of this over there, so I'm just going to do that because I believe in the importance of like bringing certain colors in both sides of the art, like or popping them around in various places so that things look kind of familiar to the viewer. They're like, oh, okay, that looks like something I saw somewhere else. You know what I mean? Um, so try that. All right, we're gonna lock our layer transparency again. And now I'm gonna turn my sketch on so I can see what I wanna do here. Um, there it is. Whoops. <laughs> I really, sorry, no offense, Apple, but I can't stand these Macs that um, have the little touch bar or whatever. It drives me nuts because I try and, I try and uh, reach up to hit delete and I wind up hitting the power, the power switch all the time. And that is maddening. All right, yeah, hey folks, if you're ever on YouTube, I am not reading the chats over there, gang, sorry. Um, head on over to behance.net slash live, and I will see your comments, okay? Please, I wanna know what you wanna say, I wanna answer your questions. Um, and I'll get to some questions here in just a moment, but right this second, I'm going to be messing over here with this I'm creating something that looks nice. Oh, I missed it. I lost that color I had a moment ago. But not to worry. You want that to be a little bit more saturated. Um, <laughs> Don't worry about this, this is gonna get darker here. Okay, that's what I want right there. Because I want more contrast as we come towards the foreground. I want a bit more contrast, right? All righty. Mm. 
more contrast. That is the order of the day here. All right, now watch this. I'm gonna fool ya. I'm gonna go darker. This one's gonna have three values. Yikes. Did he say three values? Is he out of his mind? some of that light poking through there at the bottom. All right, that takes care of that feller. Let's pop on back to this really big one right here, this big guy. And let's go ahead and let's make him have a bit more stuff going on, okay? We're just gonna add some interest there. Nice big shapes back here because we're dealing with a big shape. So I want that to be how we handle it there. Alrighty. Not enough juice. Pump it up. I think that's heading in the right direction. That might be a bit too much. Lighten that up a hair. Warm it up a hair. Let's see how we're doing there. Well, I don't know. It's, it's kind of working. I think this needs to pop more right here, this shape. So we're gonna take our color right there and check this out we're going to make a selection of that like this and I'm about to get fancy on you all so pay attention all right I made a selection here I'm gonna grab my gradient tool and we're gonna warm this up to, or we're gonna brighten up our color just a hair like that we're gonna do this okay and let me make that just a bit more yellow. There we go. Like this. And I'm going to set that to um, sort of like a, let's see, soft light might work. I think I'll go to screen and then I might reduce the opacity just to hair. And that makes that come forward. And then this big shape here. By the way, this is the kind of stuff I normally do at the end, is like throw some gradients on top of stuff. Um, but, you know, here we are. Just like in the back here, you know, I feel like, okay, I need to make this darker, um, and this bottom part lighter. So I could, I could grab this, I could go a little bit warmer. And I can make a selection of that layer and then just go, bam like that, set it to multiply, and then knock it back a little bit. Know what I mean? Now we're starting to get into the really fancy business though. All right, now we have got to take care of this rider, so let's pull up our sketch. Zoop. There he is. And even though I'm not probably gonna be able to finish the entire drawing, you're gonna get the gist of it. So I'm gonna do a quick silhouette of this feller. Yeah. Including his horsey horse, okay. Oh, and by the way, um, I should have mentioned this up front because it's kind of a cool thing, is I'm actually gonna have the horse's feet like kind of blend in to the the ground he's standing on. Um, let's see what I mean in a second here. 
if I have time. I hope I have time for that because it's kind of a neat little trick. All right, so there's our shape right there. We're going to go cooler with that. And there's our horse and rider. And I'm going to just hide the sketch for a minute. And you see that like really there's not that much to do here. I mean, you just knock in a few little odds and ends. Um, and that'll take care of that. You know, you're obviously going to use more contrast. So you're going to go a little darker. Make sure you really go desaturated with your, with your, when you start getting into like green territory, right? Because greens can be pretty bright, pretty scary. Um, so let's lock our transparency. And I can just do this. Just to separate them from from one another. Okay. And I would go ahead and add more color or whatnot. But one of the ideas I had was actually I was gonna take whatever color I put here and then just put a layer on top of it and do a, like a little grassy kind of a shape like this. So we have it, this impression there's like a little patch of grass right there. Um, just to have them standing. And then I thought that'd be kind of a nice thing to do. Um, just to like add the smaller shapes, you know, that you make should be more like in the foreground. The ones that have a bit more detail because that's where we want to be looking, right? Um, all right, so quickly, why don't I just do this because we have like three minutes left, two minutes left, three minutes. I'm going to come back to my sky layer and I'm going to... Um, do a bit of banding here. So we're gonna come select this color. Okay, go just a little brighter and a touch warmer. And just like do this. Okay. And then pop up behind there. And we're gonna go more like towards a sort of a pink and then a tiny bit lighter like that. And we're going to pull that in like that. Knock that back in opacity. Try and make our sky have some like cool stuff going on. And when you know time is of the essence, like in a situation like this, and you don't have all day, this is where you can just pull up your curves. You know, you can like darken stuff a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, don't be afraid to use the tools that you have to make things work. You gotta use what you got, okay? Um, but then I can just go ahead and do my like sort of organic shaped kind of sun right there. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna be kind of wonky and that's totally fine. And just knock that in, pure white. Okay, see how bright that is all of a sudden? You're like, geez Louise, that's crazy. Um, 
and then I can lock transparency and I can say, all right, let's take our sky color. We're just gonna go a hair lighter. I can do something like that. See that? That makes it a little easier to look at. Grab this color. We're gonna go a little bit lighter. We're gonna go a little bit warmer. We come up here in the sky and you know, we can do our our birds, nasty vultures or whatever they are out there. Looking for something to eat. Right? Fill that in. And there you go. Well, hey, that's that's pretty decent for a 55 minute show. Um, you can see where this is going. You can see how it works out and you can see where it can wind up. Again, this is an illustration I did for another demo. You can see how that works. I hope you give this a try. You know, you make selections, you make adjustments, you keep going. And um, you'd be surprised how far you can get with something like this. It's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care of each other and uh, take care of yourselves. Remember to be kind and I'll see you next time. Take care. Ciao for now. Thank you.